Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. So I just finished River City Girls 2 on Nintendo Switch. It was an interesting game. I went into this not expecting much because I was told that the game was a big step down from the original. But I would say, generally speaking, it's about on the same level of quality with some minor improvements. If you were a big fan of the original River City Girls, like I was, you're going to love River City Girls too. You get lots of homages to classic Double Dragon and uh, River City <laughs> River City titles. And, uh, you know, you just get Misako and Kyoko doing their thing. And their thing is one of the most charming female video game leads I've ever seen, honestly. I, w I was just thinking when I was playing this that, like, I... I think I like um, like Masako more than I than most female video game characters. She she has a lot of personality. She is she's kind of a bit of a bite to her, and it's it's a little bit different. Like you you get this sense playing the game that the, the creators really came up with some really interesting, unique concepts to these characters. Specifically, this idea that like the girls aren't exactly good people. <laughs> They're not living in like the most ideal situation. <laughs> They're poor as fuck. Nobody likes them. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, they just go around beating people up all the time. Like, uh, they really, uh, they're really, really dumb. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, this game is really funny. This game isn't shy away from, like, portraying the characters as being, like, deeply flawed people. But that's kind of what makes it compelling. Because even though, like, the girls aren't, tip aren't, like, really the best video game heroes ever, you know, like, morality-wise... They're so charismatic, and they're so charming, and they're trying so hard. You can't help but, like, really root for them. They're... It's... It's a lot of fun. Like, I... I was surprised when I played River City Girls Zero early last year, just how much different the... That version of the characters actually are. Because that one, like, takes itself way more seriously than the, uh, the newer girls games that like are really satirical and don't take themselves seriously at all like zero has this like really dark like edge to it it really feels like a serious delinquent story and in a lot of ways i kind of miss that aspect of it like a part of me wishes that like uh you know way forwards river city girls like took itself very seriously but as it so happens uh oh God, again <sighs> okay as it so happens River City Girls, it has a unique tone it's going for, and although I really, really prefer, like, the, the 90s delinquent style of uh, River City Girls Zero, that's, like, one of my... That's, like, becoming my jam, I think. I love that kind of thing. Uh, although I love that kind of thing a lot, I think Zero... Uh, River City Girls does do something else for me, in that, like, it really feels like a video game. Like, it really does... It really does, like, value like, being a fun, interesting, engaging experience with, like, fresh, unique environments, crazy enemies, really creative out-there boss fights that don't feel like they would they would fit in in a serious delinquent story. Uh, you have, like, you know, magic powers, robots. You have, like, uh, the damsel in distress saving herself. Like, it's it's all, like, it's all a lot of fun, honestly. And, and that, is, um, that is the key word here. It's fun. Like, this really is something I would put up there with... The very best of what Nintendo put out last year. This this game, I think, would probably cut my top twenty alongside like River City Girls Zero as being like one of the one of the best games of last year. And uh, I I really really value just this kind of this kind of experience. I I I feel like for me personally, the game could have been a bit different bit more different than the original like plot wise uh the writing is tightened a lot it's it's a lot less cringy than it was in the last game i found myself like laughing with the characters a little bit more and like really going along with the jokes more in this one uh but like generally speaking the plot is just kind of like a big nothing burger because like the girls are just going around beating people up now that's basically what happened in the first game but like the first game you had this like excuse uh, this excuse plot of going out, of uh, trying to rescue your boyfriends from, from like, uh, someone. <laughs> and then, like, you just, 
end up overthrowing a Yakuza empire by, by accident, right? Uh, and then, like, you get the M. Night Shyamalan plot twist, where, like, uh, you were, they were never, <laughs> where you were the side chicks the entire time. Like, I don't care what anyone says, that was funny, okay? And, and it's kind of, um, kind of a shame in this game. They seem to have dialed that, that back a lot, because it feels like Kunio and Ricky are, like, legit friends with Masako and Kyoko. Like, they're there in, like, the cutscenes and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, I didn't play as them at all. Like, I, but what I understand how this works is that the plot is no different depending on whether you play as, like, the girls or the boys. And that's kind of a shame. Like, I feel like if you're not going to have Kunio and Ricky doing their, like, own unique plot line, like, why, why have them there? It, it just feels like... Just have the game be about the girls. Give, like, Kudio and Ricky something else to do. Have them, like, have some kind of justification not being there. Like, I I think I speak for most fans when I say this. Uh, I think I would have preferred Mommy and Hisabe to be the alternate characters. Like, make all six characters female. You know, we got, we have Prumi and Mar uh, Prumi and Marion. Uh, Marion, in particular, is a standout example of, of someone I, I really, really enjoy in this game. Uh, uh, best boss fight, by the way. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is, like, a weird complaint I have about this, is that, like, the first couple of boss fights are, like, top tier, and then they just segue into being, like, ridiculously gimmicky. Like, you have that, like, god tier, like, Marion boss fight with, like, these crazy barrels that she throws at you, and you have, like, dodging, you have to, like, stay out of, the she fills the room with acid, and you have to, like, avoid her attacks. It's crazy, like, the double dragon theme is playing in the background, it's, it's absolute Kino, it's great, if you're a fan of... Of of, cla of that classic NES game, like it is top tier shit. And then after that, you get like a handful of gimmicky bosses. You get you get uh you get Blair the witch. I, yeah, they named a the witch Blair. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> you get like uh the hacker chick who is just unbearably obnoxious with like her force field and stuff like that. And then you get you know a chef. Like by the time you beat the, the obnoxious gimmicky bosses. The game is basically over because you've you've leveled up so much trying to beat the gimmicky ones that like you you end up steamrolling the rest of the game. Like that's what happened to me is that I really struggled beating beating Blair and so I leveled the crap out of everything and like maxed out like bought a whole bunch of like high high end healing items and then uh, when all was said and done I ended up like not being able like the game was basically over. You know, like, I just ended up steamrolling through the rest of the game. This game is, like, less linear less linear than the original. And I can't decide whether it's a good or bad thing. Because on one hand, like, there are side quests and things you can do and characters from the first game you can interact with. There are fun mini-games that weren't really in the, uh... Get fucked again. There are fun mini-games that weren't really in the, in the original. Um, there's all these things that just, uh that are technical improvements. Like, you would think being non-linear would really help this game a lot, but I think, like, having a structure for the original, I think using the same gameplay mechanics as the original, but making it more non-linear, didn't really do a whole lot for the experience. Like, it feels like, because it's non-linear, you can, like, spend a lot of time just grinding and, like, getting getting every getting every food item and just, like, leveling up your characters and, and just, like, really just curb stomping the game and that's i imagine that's a lot of fun in a way uh because again like the side quests are perfectly fun there's nothing wrong with them or anything but like you know when you're doing the regular quest line and you're just like you haven't even done everything yet and you're steamrolling your opponents it's just ugh, i don't know a another thing uh i i kind of have a problem with well not really a problem but like an observation i feel like this game was made for two players because Playing it by myself, uh, because I'm a lonely fuck who has no friends who play games, uh, because I'm playing by myself, like, I keep getting curb stomped by these bosses. And, like, uh, the two-player mode has, like, this feature where you can, like, bring each other back if you get KO'd. And I I get the impression, although I'm not, like, completely sure about this, uh, I get the impression that if I were to play this game, like, with a friend, which is never going to happen, like, if I play this game with a friend... And, like, all the way through the end, it would become, like, a way better experience. Because, you know, like, there were so many instances where I was fight, uh, fighting these bosses with their crazy patterns where I'm just, like, oh, I could, if I had someone else here, that person could, like, fight these zombies while, like, I deal with this force field or uh, punch this whore in the face. Like, that's, that's, uh, 
that's what I would want. Like, I, I, I feel like the bosses in particular were designed around two players. And, like, the game is perfectly, like, doable with with two players, but, like, with, with a single player. But, like, if it, the game is, like, ideal for, like, multiple players, like, I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm just like, why why is this game not structured? It's one of the reasons why the original Double Dragon on NES is still my favorite, because it's uh, it's perfectly balanced for a single player for the most part. Um, I, again, the arcade version has like a special place in people's hearts for a reason, but I, I do prefer the NES version because like it's a single player game. You know, like who am I gonna find who would want to play a game like this with me? You know, like I would get, uh, it's just not gonna happen. So uh, that that's just an observation. But like for the most part, um, you know, all of my complaints are nitpicks. You know, the music is god tier. Like I like the soundtrack of the original. Like, I liked it a lot, actually. But, like, the sequels, River City Girls 2, 2 soundtrack is absolute Kino. It's by far, I would say, the best soundtrack I've I uh, I've listened to in a while, since, like, Live Alive, I would say. And I, I just love the vocal tracks. I love, like, how uh, a lot of the songs are based off, like, the bosses and stuff like that. Like, my favorite is, of course, like, that really... Uh, haunting melody like get off my lawn from a blair's theme and like when you're in the when you're in the forest and it's like hyping her up essentially like her it, it's like foreshadowing her personality not only is the song great it does this thing where like it really uh foreshadows the ex existence of the boss and i love that kind of thing you know i'm like it's it's the same reason why i love margaret moonlight and they're the same kind of characters actually come to think of it um like, it, it's just so much fun, like, just listening to these tracks as you're beating the crap out of people. And, and I will say this, uh, I never got tired of the combat in this game. Uh, much like the originals, uh, the combat is just stellar. Like, you get, like, a wide range of enemies to uh, to battle. You get, like, um, there's lots of technical depth. Uh, there's all these things you can do, all these strategies. Uh, each character is, I believe, has, like, completely different moves. Um, I only played as Masako because... Uh, she is my favorite by far, but like, you know, I, oh, damn it, damn, um, Misako is my favorite by far, I like her a lot, so I didn't get a lot of, I, I didn't really have an opportunity to play as anyone else, I wanted to play as Kunio, but like, for some reason, like, I, I selected Kunio, and then like, I had Kyoko as my partner, and I don't exactly... I didn't like that dynamic. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like maybe I would have like said it to have like Masako as the partner, but like I, I don't know what the what their deal with that was. I I don't know. Like the game, the game just weirdly it really wanted Kunio and Ricky in the game like to be playable characters, and they don't really do a whole lot. Like again, I, I like Kunio a lot, like a lot, Kunio and Ricky a lot, but like River City Girls shouldn't be uh, shouldn't feel pressured to like. Have them play a major role, I, I feel like. Like, the Double Dragon Bros are, like... Oops, hang on. Doing their thing. Like, what... Why can't they just do have the same kind of... Like, the same kind of, like, cameo appearance or something? Like, have them fight, like, Ken at the end or something? And, and that's another thing that really bothers me. Like, again, this might be a problem uh, for River City as a whole, but, like, what, what exactly is the continuity? <laughs> because, like, going from River City Girl Zero to this, it, it makes absolutely no sense. Because, like, I... River City Girl Zero seemed to imply that, like, the plot aspects from this game would uh, carry over into River City Girls 2. The only thing that carries over is the existence of the Ken and the existence of Sabu, all right? That's it. That's the only thing that really seems to uh, have been affected here. And, like, Ken, like, they're completely different characters in these games. You know, like, I think Misako and Kyoko are different characters here, too. And, like, I'm not sure about, like, Kunio and Ricky. I would say they're, they're quite different in this, uh, this interpretation, but, like, way forward's versions of the characters are, like, way wackier than I think was originally intended. And I don't know, it just kind of... I think it works, but at the same time, it's like, hmm, do they want to, like, have continuity or not? Because, like, there's a joke about, like, <laughs> they, they have, like, they, they seem to, like, be taking Double Dragon, like, completely seriously as, like, canon in this universe, you know, because, like, you have, like, Billy and Jimmy Lee, you have, like, Marion, who's, like, uh, close with them, you have, like, uh, 
You have like Sonny Lee makes a cameo, which uh, is hilarious, by the way. It's um, it's cool to see like all these references and cameos, but like it just makes you wonder like how this all fits together. It's such a hodgepodge of like of like uh, cultures and ideas. It, it doesn't make any sense. Like I, I think you actually see like River City River City versions of the characters in this. I, I mean River City Ransom versions of the characters, right? So you actually see Roxy like uh, from the NES game in there. Who, of course, I, I think is like in the westernized version of like Hisabe. I think what they're doing is that they're like they're pretending that like Alex and uh, ah, what the fuck, what the fuck was the other guy's name? Alex and like that other guy are like different characters, and that like the river, the western like R R River City Ransom characters like coexist with like the Japanese ones in the setting. It's it's kind of wacky, and I kind of wonder if they're going to. If they're going to like, um, if they're going to double down on this, I I'm really really curious. Like, if uh, River City Girls Three is going to is is going to like feature more aspects of like these different cultures, I I don't know where a hypo a hypothetical se sequel could go. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of like sequel bait, what what is up with like Mommy and Hisabe? <laughs> They had such pivotal roles in the original, but, like, they're not in this one at all. They kind of show up at the end, say they're, like, going to help, but, like, the fight's already over, and there's, like, a, a massive joke about it. Like, I think WayForward has already confirmed there's going to be DLC, so maybe they'll appear then, but at the, at the moment, I'm just kind of, like, I don't know, like, it feels like a waste of a character. Like, I don't understand why there were so many playable characters. Like, I feel like I didn't have a chance to play with any of them. You know, Kunio and Ricky didn't need to be there. Pruby didn't need to be there. Uh, like, I would have been happy with just Marion, honestly. Like, Mary Marion is, like, the only one that feels like she's actually actively involved in the plot and actually has, like, a role and actually, like, has a, you know, a background and, like, some, some interesting, funny moments. Like, the other characters just don't really feel like they're even there honestly like it, it just i don't know like it, it, <laughs> it's it's um it's weird like watching ricky and cuneo in the ending where they're just like sitting on the couch like playing with their phone like uh, ricky's playing with his phone and cuneo's asleep and i'm just like did they do anything throughout this entire adventure it's just it just seems weird that they're there. I, I suppose it's because may, maybe the Japanese audience like wanted a more like playable Ricky and Cunio. I, I don't know. It, it just it just feels like to me they didn't need to be there. Honestly, I don't know. And and I like the characters too. I just, I just feel like you know, Masako and Kyoko. Like this was about them really. Like th this entire adventure was there was their uh, was their thing to go through and and just. I don't know. Like Ricky and Cuneo needed needed more presence. I think if they were going to be playable characters, like they don't mm. like the characters a lot, but they did, they needed to do something else with them. Maybe we'll uh, we'll see some more with the DLC. So yeah, uh, all around, um, yeah, this was a really positive experience. I like this a lot. I thought it was a really solid game, really solid release. Lots of um, lots of enjoyable positive aspects to this. I I hope we get a River City Girls three, or uh, more likely, I hope like uh, you know, Way Forward continues just handling the license. I actually don't think it needs to be River City Girls three. Like I would not mind if uh, Way Forward is. Let's see. I would not mind if Way Forward is allowed to, like you know, bring Double Dragon back and develop like you know Neon two or. Like do something else with the license. Like there, there's a lot of things they can do. Like they, uh, I think this game was really limited by being like a very low budget sequel to like a game that was already kind of low budget. So maybe if they're like allowed to start fresh, like really come up with something a little bit different and unique, we might get something truly great, like truly top tier, like god tier River City Ransom. I think we're almost there. I think it's very close, but we need like a little bit of fine tuning, a little bit of polish, and we will have one of the best River City games ever made.